Before an instrument pilot leaves the ramp, they must ensure that the aircraft instruments, communications, and navigation systems are accurate and properly working. The Instrument Cockpit Check, or ICC, allows the pilot to check that all systems that will be used on an instrument flight are working. The EPIC Flight Academy Instrument Standardization Manual explains the process of an ICC. Before the pilot begins to taxi the aircraft, the pilot needs to check the following instruments are working properly. The pilot first needs to check that the magnetic compass is full of fluid, not leaking, the deviation card is present, and no cracks are visible. Then, on the primary flight display, confirm that the airspeed indicator reads zero knots since the plane is not in motion. The attitude indicator shows that the wings are level since the aircraft is on the ground. The altimeter is adjusted to the current barometric pressure from the current weather observation and that it shows that the altitude is plus or minus 75 feet of the airport elevation. For instance, at New Smyrna Beach Municipal Airport, the airport elevation is 11 feet. The altimeter would need to read no more than 86 feet or no less than negative 64 feet to be acceptable for flight. The vertical speed indicator indicates zero feet per minute since the aircraft is not in a climb or descent while on the ground. Next, the horizontal situation indicator heading matches the magnetic compass heading. Moving over to the multifunction display, the pilot needs to check the line replaceable unit status. All line replaceable units must have a green check confirming they are operational. This can be found on the auxiliary section of the MFD. Next, verify that the clock is set to Zulu time, not local time. The pilot should also confirm that all MFD data in the data bar shows the desired information. Common data displayed in the data bar is ground speed, distance, X-track, and estimated time en route. The course deviation indicator is set to auto. If the pilot plans on using global positioning system to navigate, they must confirm that both GPS 1 and 2 are working, that receiver autonomous integrity monitoring is available for the entire duration of the flight, and that wide area augmentation systems are on if those approaches are being conducted. After the magnetic compass, PFD, and MFD are confirmed, the pilot must check the standby instruments. The standby airspeed indicator must indicate zero knots when not moving, the standby altimeter is adjusted to current barometric pressure and indicates within 75 feet of the field elevation, and the standby attitude indicator is straight and level when not in motion on the ground. Returning back to the PFD, the pilot then ensures that the proper communications and navigation frequencies are tuned in necessary for the specific flight. Then, check that the timer works by starting the time, letting it run for a few seconds, pause it, and reset it. If desired, the pilot can turn on and adjust the bearing information to assist in navigating. Then, set the transponder to standby, and after confirming it is on standby, squawk the appropriate transponder code. VFR flights squawk 1200, and instrument flights squawk the appropriate transponder code assigned in the clearance. After all of these areas are checked and taxi clearance is given, the pilot then needs to confirm the rate of turn indicator shows a turn in the direction that the pilot turns the plane and that the turn coordinator, often called the ball, swings to the outside or opposite direction of the turn. The compass and HSI move freely and the attitude indicators remain wings level or does not indicate more than a 5 degree bank. Once all of these checks have been completed, the pilot should announce ICC complete to the crew of the aircraft. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.